Hi there, in today's demonstration I'm going to show you how you can send an email with a unique set of attachments based on a Microsoft form submission or when a new list item is created. So this particular video is born off of a question raised from one of my subscribers. They're actually looking to send a unique set of attachments to a patient or patients when a Microsoft form is completed. So I'll demo how to do that using their SharePoint list as a source, but I'll also show you how to do it directly from a Microsoft form, whether that's a question allowing you to select multiple answers or individual unique questions with a yes, no response. So without further ado, let's jump into my demonstration. So here I am in Power Automate with the basics of a flow already configured. You can see I have when a new response is submitted as my trigger and then get response details, which is all I need in order to get the response from a form response as it's submitted. And then I have two compose actions. One is looking at a multiple answer dynamic value and one is looking at a single answer dynamic value. And I want to run this initially just to show you what the returned values look like. So I'm going to go into test mode and we'll put it into manual. And then I'm going to jump across onto my sample Microsoft form. So here we have my Microsoft form and you can see my first question is based on a multiple response. So what model of car am I interested in? Because I'm going to send myself some car guides in PDF format. So I'm going to select uh, Skoda and Citroen and I'm going to hit next and then I'm going to show you my second set of questions. So these questions are all individual. They're based on yes, no responses. I have to respond to each of them. You can see by the asterisks there that they're required. So I'm going to say that I want the flu guide, I want the COVID guide, but I don't want the smoking or general surgery guide. And then I can supply an email address. So rather than relying on the email of the user that submitted the form, if this form was public and available to everyone, we could supply our own email address. Or equally, if it was a form being, being completed by a member of staff and they wanted to supply the customer's email address, they could supply it in here. So at the moment, I'm just going to put in one, two, three. So by submitting that, that will then trigger my flow. And we can see that that flow is now run. And all I want to demonstrate at this, at this stage is the values that are returned. So if I look at multiple answers, you can see here that we have an array being returned, showing both Skoda and Citroen have been selected. And it's here that we'll have to make some decisions on how we process this data. If we look at a single answer, we can see that we get the output of yes. Equally, if the answer had been no, we would see a no. So again, we need to create some logic based on this string that's returned for a single answer. Now, just to set the scene a bit more, I'm going to go into my SharePoint document library. I have two folders here. One is called card docs, and you can see in here I have five files named by the car manufacturer, and it's a PDF. And similarly, if we jump into my patient leaflet documents, I have a COVID guide, a flu guide, a general surgery guide, and a smoking guide. So the assumption is here that the solution will be able to cater for whatever file names you've created for these guides. You don't have to be as simplistic as the, the naming convention that I've given here. If you have another type of file naming um, convention, we can accommodate that as we build out our flow. So jumping back into our Power Automate Cloud Flow, if we go into the edit mode, I'm going to clear things up by deleting these two compose actions because they're no longer required and we're purely just to demonstrate how the data is returned from that Microsoft form. We're going to build two solutions in this one flow. The first is to go and cater for the, the first answer, which allows multiple answers. We're going to email our attachments to the submitter of the form, which will be myself. And then the second solution is going to be based on those individual answers, of which there are four. And we will attach just those unique attachments based on their yes, no answers. And of course, that email will go to the email address that has been supplied as one of those answers. So in order to kick things off, 
Um, the way that I've decided to create a note of the file names that we're going to be sending is to use an object. And I'm doing that using a compose action. So I'm going to give that the name file, uh, fi files, files, we'll go with files. And uh, in there, I'm going to insert an object which is based on the form answers. So you can see here we've got Ford, Voxel, Skoda, Citroen, Tesla, and the file names. So the keys will be the form answer, the form answers. The values will be the file names. And this is where you can specify the file names that suits your existing naming convention. Now I've already done that in my notepad and you can see it's opened up here already. And uh, we have the answers. So Citroen, Ford, Skoda, Tesla and Vauxhall as the keys in double quotes. And then we have the file names, which is citron.pdf, 4.pdf, etc., all in curly brackets. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and I jump back into my flow and simply paste that in. And we can now call this files object and reference the Citroen, Ford, Skoda, Tesla, Vauxhall using the square brackets. And so hopefully this will become or make more sense as we progress through the flow. So the next step is to create an apply to each, because what we want to do is, based on all of the ticked answers, which returns an array that we saw in the initial run, we want to loop through them, and we want to get the file and the content, and then we want to create a new array of that file content so that we can send it via email. Now I do have an email, uh, a video even, sorry, on sending multiple attachments based on get files from a document library. So if you want to watch that, that provides a bit more detail. So into the apply to each, the first thing I'm going to do is actually use an expression called JSON. And this just ensures that the string, which looks like an array and is returned from Microsoft Forms, is actually formatted as an array. So we type in JSON, we jump back into our dynamic content, and I'm going to scroll down to what model of car are you interested in? And that will insert that expression and we can hit OK. The next part is to get the file content and based on a file path. So hopefully that gets me the right one. So get the file content using path. And we can go ahead as if we were selecting an individual document. So into my Demobar 365 SharePoint site. I'm going to go and navigate to one of those files, whether it be Citroen or any other. And we'll go into the car docs folder and I'll pick the Citroen one. And you can see here that we're getting the file content based on this file path. But we don't want it to be based on a fixed file path. We want it to be based on a dynamic file path. So based on the responses that we've been given in that Microsoft form. So I'm going to highlight the path excluding the file name and I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard with control and C. I'm going to delete that and then as you see it's asking for the file path so we'll go ahead and paste that in and then we need to dynamically query the file name from the object that we created earlier. So this apply to each is based on the form responses so if we had Skoda in there we would be looping through the answer is just Skoda. If we had Skoda and Citroen, we would have two loops, one for Skoda, one for Citroen. And we can call those values using the expression item. Now, if you're familiar with objects, you can build an expression that will query a key from an object based on the key name. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into dynamic content. You can see here I have the dynamic value for files. I'm going to select that after our closing bracket here. I'm going to put a question mark and then I'm going to put a square bracket at both the beginning and the end of our item expression. And this will populate with the name of the answer that's been given. And in return, we will get the value from our object being returned. So if we put, populate this with Skoda, we will get the output, which is skoda.pdf, or equally, if you have a different file name, your file name will be returned. So we can hit OK, and that will save there, and this will now dynamically give us our file path. Now the next part is to 
get all the details for our attachment. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a new step and return to this apply to each in a minute and it all makes sense. I'm going to use the send an email action and I'll select that and R2 is based on dynamic content. We're going to send it to the responder's email. The subject, it can say here are your brochures. Um, enjoy picking your new car. And then if we go into the advanced options, it's here that I want to look at, which is based on the attachments. So what I tend to do is I put in some data into the attachment name and the attachment content, and then I can switch to view the entire array. And the thing that I want to copy is between or inclusive of the, the curly brackets. So this is the object, and it's this that we want to create in our apply to each. So I'm going to copy that. I'm jumping back into my apply to each and adding a compose action. Now that compose action, all I do now is paste in that object that I've created or copied. I'm just going to tidy things up a bit by removing some of those extra return lines. And then I need to insert the name and the content bytes. So the content bytes is straightforward. Make sure you remove everything, including the double quotes. And you can see here I have the dynamic value file content. So that is the content bytes dealt with based on the getting the file content using the path. The file name, as we know already, is this expression. So all I'm going to attempt to do here is open that up, grab that expression, jump back to our one, two, three, this time excluding the inverted commas because we do want to keep the inverted commas. And I'll go into the expression builder, paste that in, hit OK. And you can see now I have that file name in our double quotes or inverted commas. So now that we've got uh, that in place, we've managed to get our file content, we've managed to create our object of that file content and file name based on the requirements of the send and email action. And then using a clever little expression known as outputs, we can get the value of this compose. Now, what might be a good thing here actually at this point is just to rename this to our attachment content and then we simply query the attachment content compose action via this expression that we create here so we type in outputs open bracket single quotes and in between those single quotes we just type in the name of this compose. So attachment content, attachment content. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. And I think what we'll do now is we'll save it and we will test it. OK, so into test mode, into manual, hit the test. And we'll jump on over to our form and uh, put that into preview mode. And I'm going to select Ford, Skoda and Tesla. And we'll hit next. It doesn't really matter what I answer here at the moment because I haven't built up this second part of our flow. But I'll hit submit. Go back to my flow to see it running. There we go. So it'll be going through an apply to each. It's, got, it's running three times because, of course, I supplied three answers. It'll be getting the content of those three files. And then it'll be adding it into the object. And then finally, it'll go into the send email action and it will send the whole lot. Um, which we can see has completed. Now, if I jump onto my mailbox and just do a quick, oh, it just popped in there. So here are your brochures. And we can see that we have the Ford, Skoda and Tesla um, guides all attached. So based on our form responses, we have our different guides. That's a big file, 18 meg. Is it going to open? Yep. And finally, our Ford guide. So we've got those three guides based on the response that we gave there. Now, let's go and have a look at our second type of questions, which is the yes, no. So this one is slightly different. Um, same idea and that we still need to construct our object of attachments. But if we go back into our flow here and go into edit, I'll start building it out from beneath this solution here so that we'll actually send based on the two outcomes. So the first thing that I want to do now is to create a compose action. 
and the purpose of that is to allow me to create a string of file names. So I'm just going to rename this to string of file names, I guess. And uh, we're going to use a number of expressions here and create the expression blocks. And we're going to use the if expression. And it's basically if the answer equals yes, then return the file name. Otherwise, return nothing. So slightly different approach to the one above. So here we have the expression if. I'm then going to use equals, open and close brackets. And we're going to, the answer for the uh, question was yes. So if, if it equals yes, we'll then put a comma, as you can see there. And we now, now need to go and select one of these questions, so flu guide. So basically, if the answer to the flu guide equals yes, we'll put in a comma there. We want it to equal to the file name. So the file name was fluguide.pdf. Otherwise, nothing. So single quotes. Now the other thing to note, which I haven't yet inserted, is after the file name, fluguide.pdf, I want to insert a semicolon. And the reason for that will become clear in a minute, because we're actually going to split this string once it's been created. So I'll copy that expression, and I can paste it into the note so that you can see it. Um, but what I'm going to do also is I'm going to bring up my Notepad Plus because I've also done preparation for this and I have all the other expressions. So you can see here, if equals yes, the output of each of the questions, the file name with a semicolon at the end, otherwise nothing. So the other answers we have are the COVID guide. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to jump into my string of file names, into the expression builder, paste that in hit OK, and you can see now what we get is a series of dynamic blocks, and this will allow us to create a string. So if I go back in and just grab the last two quickly, grab that one, back into the expression builder, paste that in, hit OK, and then, oops, then finally my last one, and there we go, and into my expression builder, hit paste, so that will give us a string of either the file name or nothing separated by semicolons. Then we're going to create a new compose action. And this time, using an expression known as split, we're going to create an array off of that string that we've just created. So back into the expression builder, type in split with the open close brackets. And we're going to choose the string of file names we have here, a comma, and then in single quotes, the semicolon that we added earlier. So by using the semicolon, we can then split that string that we've created into an array of file names. Now, because our if statement has two outcomes, the yes or the no, or the true or the false, if we output nothing because they've not answered yes, then we'll end up with a null or empty value in our new array. So what I will do now is I'll use the filter array action and we'll check to see if any of the items in there are null and if they are, we'll exclude them. So using the results from our compose, which we choose here, we need to check to see if the item, so we're using that item expression again, which will basically return or look at one by one each of the values within our array that we've created in the compose. And we want it to not equal. So it is not equal to and basically nothing. Now, similarly to our previous solution, we're going to go into an apply to each. And uh, that apply to each is based on the filter array as our input. So we'll put that in there. And then we're pretty much copying the same actions as before. So I'm going to just go and grab them and uh, copy them. So we'll just go into copy to my clipboard. And I can go into my clipboard here and paste. And also for our attachment content. Now there are changes that I'm going to have to make to these, but we'll just paste them in just to get the 
the bare bones of it. So we'll add the action in there and my clipboard and attachment control. So the first thing I need to update here, of course, is the file path. And the second thing is going to be this dynamic value because this doesn't apply anymore. The file path is part of the filter array. So I can get rid of that dynamic value. I also need to get rid of car docs. I need to jump across here and I've conveniently already highlighted patient leaflets, um, which I can then paste in here and put a forward slash. And then when it comes to the dynamic value, we're just relying on the expression item because it's just returning that current item in this loop. Then for the attachment content, which I'm just going to rename to attachment content two without a space, just to make things easier for further down. The file name again is not based on this expression. It's based on item. So we can update that to item and the file content whilst that is a valid file content it's not based on this file content it's based on the one that I've copied so I need to remove it and pick file content using file path 2 so there we go that's that updated now I can go and copy that send the email action as well and again we can go and make changes so into new step and into my clipboard and send an email and I didn't want to send it based on the responder's email. I want to send it on based on the email that was supplied. So email to send the patient documents. We'll say here are your guides, um, patient docs attached. And then of course we need to go and update this. So at the moment it's referring to the attachment content outputs, but we want to go for attachment content two. So I can't edit that, but I can cut it and I can then paste it back into my expression builder, which hasn't worked. So let's just try creating a new expression, which is outputs, open bracket, single quotes, and it is called attachment content two. And hit OK. So just to make sure, attachment content two, and here we've got attachment content two. So I'll go ahead and save that and we will go ahead and run it. So we will get the original email that we created as part of the first solution. And this time I'll just pick Citroen and Tesla. And I also have these series of questions. So I want the flu guide and the COVID guide, but I don't want the smoking or the general surgery guide. And I'm going to email this to the email address that I've created for Henrietta. And we'll go ahead and hit submit. Now that will allow my flow to run and it is running as we speak. And we can see it sent email one and has now sent email number two. So if I go into my email, so this time I only pick two guides from my new car. I've got the Citroen and Tesla guide attached. And then if I bring up Henrietta email, here we go, patient documents are attached. So she has got the flu and the COVID guide based on the answers given in that Microsoft form. So I did mention at the beginning of my video that I'd have a, another use case that I could demonstrate with you. And uh, that's based on a very similar flow. I'm not gonna build that out. I'm just gonna quickly show you how it works. We have when an item is created on a SharePoint list, Similar to the second solution that I just built, I have a series of if statements, and that's based on the value equaling true, as you'll see here, rather than a string. It is just the value true without any quotes around it. As before, I'm splitting it, I'm filtering it, I'm applying to each, and I'm getting the file content and creating my object, and then I'm simply sending that email based on the outputs. So if I put that into test mode, and if I jump across onto my, to my Microsoft list now, and uh, I'll go ahead and create a new item. And so this allows me to supply an email address, so Henny again. And I'm gonna send her the admission process and the non-fasting prep guide. So I've unticked the fasting prep there, and these are just Boolean fields within my SharePoint list. If I go ahead and hit save, that will trigger my flow 
and generate the email to, to Henny. If we jump across here, hopefully we'll see that in the next couple of seconds appear. Always good when we're doing a, a recorded demo. Let's have a quick look back. It's run. So Henny, there it is. So we've now got the, the document come in. So the admission process and the non-fasting prep. And if we go back and have a look at the, the history, just to explain how some of that works, because I've used the same logic, obviously, in the second solution that we built out. We have our string of file names. So if you remember, we have that if statement that output the file name and a semicolon. We then split that, which then creates our array that we see here. And that includes our empty value, because of course we've got a uh, a semicolon at the end of our string so that creates a third or extra value which is empty that's why we had the filter array because it took this input here and removed that empty value and then our apply to each simply goes through each of those two file names that we have here that's why we have two loops one of two we have the admission process and we have the non-fasting prep which gets the file content and then sends the email by constructing that array using that outputs expression. So that marks the end of the demonstration. I've shown you how to attach files dynamically based on the responses given on a Microsoft form, whether that's a multiple choice question or individual questions, and also shown you how you might do that using when an item is created in a SharePoint list based on the columns that are set as Boolean values, true or false. Hope you enjoyed that demonstration and if you haven't already please make sure you like and subscribe and i look forward to seeing you again sometime cheers thanks very much